mere paper. When you are adding fire to gunpowder, you go and sign a declaration that this uh, gunpowder, we are adding fire, but we have all resolved that there will be no explosion. Do you think that when we sign that document, there will be no explosion? So we have maintained that we still have three months to go. Let us see action on the side of government to indicate that, indeed, when crime is committed, whoever is affected we all be treated equally, and the law will take its course. Otherwise, the signing of that document will be meaningless. I have in my hand here, where is it? Uh, Vincent, the envelope you are holding. There are petitions from the constituencies where these people were killed, shot at, and injured. They have petitioned us, warning us not to commit ourselves to any such thing. So National Peace Council, you have between now and the elections to ensure that the state will demonstrate that the state is interested in peace getting into this election. Because we are also in leadership position. If we have sent our people to election theater and they have been shot and killed, in some cases, the state established a commission of inquiry. Recommendations emerged. None of the recommendations have been implemented. The election is about allocation of power. Somebody decided to print one million extra ballot papers. They were caught, pants down. The police accompanied the stakeholders for us to go and destroy these ballot papers. They know the corporates. What has happened to them as at now? Nothing. So by our own conduct, we are, we are conducting ourselves in ways that suggest that the state itself rewards violent conduct. And so my little signature cannot prevent the state to continue to encourage violent conduct. So let the state demonstrate that violent conduct during elections or outside elections is objectionable. And then everybody will conduct themselves well. Thank you very much. So that is welcome address. To <laughs> we have listened to your plea, but we don't accept the fact that we should let bygones be bygones because crime has no expiry date. The people who have been killed and maimed are people's fathers, breadwinners, sisters, and so on. And the cases are life. People are calling for justice. And they are blaming us for restraining them not to fight back in self-defense. Because we believed in peace as a political party. And when those things were happening, we restrained our people with the hope that the law would take its course. We have learned bitterly that for the past five years, the law has not taken its course. So there is no need 
to commit to any document that is lesser than even the law itself. So, but we are all interested in peace. This is the only country we have. And we always pride ourselves as being the midwives of the 1992 democracy, the fourth republican democracy. There are people here who participated in writing the constitution. There are people here who participated in the transitional processes from military rule to constitutional democracy. And we are the last people to, to, to expect that anything will happen to blow up our democracy because our grandchildren will have history to write and pride themselves that, oh, my grandfather has his signature in the, in the, in the constitution as a, as a constitutional father. And we believe that that history must not be lost. The history must still remain that we created the 1992 constitution that paved the way for a return to multi-party democracy. But we cannot sign to conditions which in our honest belief will not contribute to the sustenance of that democracy. If things are happening which we feel will undermine that constitution, we cannot be part of it. If we are sent to it, it means that we will be guilty of participating in the disruption of our democracy. That is why we are speaking up to let the wrongs be corrected so that the democracy can be saved. And so we believe that Ayawasu West was going to happen. There was a commission. There were recommendations. The recommendations have not been implemented so far. Condition number one is that let us see full implementation of the recommendations of Ayawasu West Wogon Commission of Enquiry, which was established by His Excellency Nanadu Dankwa Kufuadu himself. And we believe that he trusted in the judgment of the commissioners. That is how come some of them have proceeded to be Supreme Court judges. Number two, we want to see initiation of prosecution in respect of the perpetrators of the killings in Techiman Saf, Ablikuma Centra, Banda, and Ododododio. We want to see prosecution initiated in respect of the illegal printing and handling of several, I mean, about one million extra ballot papers that were intercepted and were destroyed by the police in our presence, and the records were taken. We don't see what the Ghana Police Service has been waiting for all these years. And even at some point, there was an orchestration to even, uh, uh, I mean, lie on us that we rather were guilty of that crime. And so we officially sent our lawyers yes. to report to the IGP yes. that we are interested in that case. It must be investigated and then
prosecutions done when found necessary. We have not heard anything about it. We want action on it now. Otherwise, the next election, the same people can go and, put, and now print more than two million. Number four, thief case of missing IT equipment from the warehouses of the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission has not been open to us. We suspect that the equipment is not missing. And they are being hidden for some unwholesome agenda. Because any time we talk about it, they say the suspects have been arrested. And that's all. Were the suspects arrested and the exhibits found on them, or we still don't know the whereabouts of the equipment and that the suspects are being held responsible for being the, the watchdogs. We don't have any information about it. And we are going into election. And the same equipment is going to be used in the uh, election ahead of us. So we want transparency about that. Because of that, we have our confidence in the IT systems at the Electoral Commission has been shaken. And we have a history in 2012 where our colleagues from MPP found it necessary to compel the state and our uh, development partners to field an external consultant to actually investigate the whole IT setup of the Electoral Commission and brought out recommendations for implementation before the election took place. Our friends from UNDP, I'm sure you will get the evidence on your files that that project was financed by the UNDP. I think we can look at that one so that to put our hearts at rest that nothing untoward is happening in the face of missing equipment and the type of things that are happening, discrepancies between registration figures and all that. We must ensure and assure our supporters that nothing fishy is happening there. Because we know that the last commissioner that was appointed, Mr. Apiahene, was a regional election director of the NPP before his appointment. So we wrote to produce evidence of his activities, his appointments, and all that, presented them that a full member of MPP cannot be a referee in these elections. We presented evidence. They were ignored. He is still there. And consultants have been engaged to support the Electoral Commission on our blind side because procurement of consultancy services is a public procurement activity. We are not aware that any such procurement has gone through the procurement procedures for everybody to know that these consultants actually mean well and they are the non-partisan type of consultants that are helping Electoral Commission with their IT systems. And we want, point number five, 
the president to declare openly on a state platform, not on his political party platform, that he will respect the will of the people as expressed by the outcome of the 2024 uh, December election results. When the president himself does an open declaration, I'm sure it will bring to rest, it will put to rest all the noise that is happening around us about their refusal or unpreparedness to hand over power, even if we, uh, they lose the elections. The voice of the leader counts so that he will rein in all his uh, uh, functionaries and appointees that we are all working according to the will of the people. Then finally, any such document, peace pact is submitted to us for signature. We want to see the IGP signing to that document. We want to see the Chief Justice signing to that document. We want to see the Attorney General signing to that document. And we want to see the National Security Coordinator signing to that document. If all of them sign, and the monitoring group commits itself to the policy of naming and shaming publicly anybody who reneges on his obligation as far as implementation of the electoral laws of this country are concerned. We think that we will have the way forward. Thank you very much, and you are welcome.